Hi, my name is Omer Fast, and I'm standing at the Hine Onstad Kunst Center. You're welcome to my exhibition, which is happening inside here. Please come in. We're showing two pieces, Nostalgia from 2009 and 5,000 Feet is the Best from 2011. Both of these works are similar in that they start with a conversation that I've had with uh, somebody who tells me about his life, about his experiences. In Nostalgia, it also begins with a conversation with a migrant from Nigeria to talk about their stories of migration and their experiences in their uh, host country in Great Britain. I resisted this notion of uh, being an investigative journalist and trying to dig and dig and dig and push for spectacular details, to push for the hard details of the story. I uh, have an aversion to doing that. But at the same time, if you're left with information, with stories that are very familiar, sometimes cliched, you don't have something that is particularly interesting. So I decided to focus on one part of the story that involves a nostalgic time in his life where as a child he learned how to build a trap for catching partridges, birds in the forest. And you put the stick down, make sure it's in the ground, and you tie a rope or twine on top of the head, just like the fishing line, you know the fishing line? You make a loop with it, and you get another half-length stick, same one. You tie it, it's a long stick there like that. You bend the long stick down, and then you clip it to the upright sticks, you know, and stick them into the ground. The story of how to build a trap is taken uh, into a narrative that is both futuristic and a very retro. It's a kind of a retro-futuristic science fiction B-movie that involves a very simple, obvious ploy in which uh, power relations are turned upside down, so what's black is uh, white and what's white is black. We find ourselves in something that looks kind of nostalgic, to me at least, in a film that looks like it was made in the late 70s or early 80s that depicts a society in Africa which is doing well and which is, has to find itself almost overwhelmed by migration from uh, northern Europe. Peter's original story of how to build the trap, that kind of recipe for how to build a trap, is used in this science fiction movie as a kind of a leitmotif. It's passed along from one character to another until the story returns to its original storyteller who then also makes use of it. And so it's never clear where that story originates, but it's somewhat clear how it passes along from one person to another and the kind of economy that it creates as it's being passed, much like money or currency. How did you get here? Walked. Walked? How? Through the tunnel. Isn't it blocked? Not all the way, miss. There's some detours, there's smaller tunnels. People keep digging them. Now please, don't call me miss. I'm not a policewoman. This film begins from uh, conversations that I had with a drone pilot operator, a sensor operator. They work in a base uh, just outside of the city of Las Vegas. They control airplanes that fly halfway across uh, the planet on the other side of the world and are involved in uh, spying, surveillance, and of course, uh, targeting of combatants. Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. So what do you want to talk about? That's what I was going to ask you. Man, I don't want to talk about anything. You're the one paying, remember? Not paying that much. You want to pay me more? You okay? He told me mostly about his life and his work, mostly the technical aspects of his job. He was very resistant. He didn't want to speak about any of the live fire missions, and he often broke off the interview, stopped the interview, in order to think about whether or not he could answer a question or when he felt like things were getting a little too hot. And at that point, we would always go out into the corridor of the hotel to have a cigarette break. In these moments, he would kind of soften up and uh, tell me a little bit more about the things that he wouldn't tell me on camera, and also a little bit about his life. 
And then also he would tell me about some of the live fire missions. And I decided to use the material that I collected from him, both on camera and off camera, to make the work. Because I don't have the documents, the material for the off camera bits, I had to substitute something for it. And so the narrative of the film wanders, it uh, meanders from uh, inside an interview situation to outside in Las Vegas where little criminal activities are happening. And it presents these stories in relationship to the on-camera interview segments uh, where the drone pilot is talking about his life and work. Five thousand feet is the best. We love it when we're sitting at five thousand feet. You have more description. Um, plus, at five thousand feet, I mean, I can tell you what type of shoes you wear <laughs> from a mile away. <laughs> I can tell you what type of clothes the person's wearing. Is like they have a beard, their hair color, and everything else. So they're very clear cameras on board. Um, we have the IR infrared, which we can switch to automatically and that'll pick up any heat signatures or cold signatures. I mean, if someone sits down, let's say, on a cold surface for a while and then gets up, you'll still see the heat from that person for a long time. It kind of looks like a white blossom just shining up into heaven. It's quite beautiful. <laughs> 